Hi, this is Brian McHenry of McHenry Software. We're going to go through the quick steps to create a new project and then some of the additional features we have, some of the standard features, a reference set of uh, ideas so when you have a new project you know how to do it. What you're watching right now is the uh, video from the Collision Magazine article and we're going to set up one with a VRML since this one we didn't have a scene scan and we'll just show you how to bring in a scene scan and use it with a overhead things like that and then we'll come back to this we have another video that we may attach to this or have separately but here we go first thing we do is of course when you open up the program let's go ahead and hit pause and close this for a second if you have a 64-bit machine, you should have this icon on your desktop. For those with 32-bit machines, you'll have this icon. But it now installs the 64-bit because that's our default program. But then you click on that to start, and then that brings up the last project you had. And this project happened to be the uh, Collision Magazine article, 109 mile an hour impact. But we have a different one we want to do. So start a new project, you go up upper menu here upper left and we see all these icons and everything something to remember is you can easily check what do they all mean etc by clicking on the help file important forum topics video link to all demos or you can just go to the forum and you'll see here let's just bring up the forum before I go there in the forum you see you have McHenry software news and there's licensee news and then there's licensee only but either of these like more important things like that for videos you just go to McHenry licensee and you see there's the video link here but then also in here tech support has information more detailed and sometimes when we you send tech support we have those in there which is for licensees only this more generalized is just to help you uh, understand more or certain announcements etc but the other way that we can do this is we just go to the help movie clips important forum topics videos link to all and you'll see that there's new ones are how to videos which we call task specific and what task specific means for example on this vehicle 3.2 overview of features which i may update to the ver version 4.0 since there's some new features or edit it and add in if you click you see that we have there's a video that you can go to or you can go and on descriptions at certain points in the video so for example if we wanted to know how do we do a new project you see there's a new project here if we click on that and it brings up the video at that point for a new project next on the item is the new project and we'll probably go through a new project that's of course that's the audio from the actual video going back you can do any of these like clone a tree takes a second to get there depending on your speed. One way is you just click clone, you say OK, and then we can grab it. You see how there's two and we could put another there's one. There's a number of things that are on there in the how to that get you there. Main point we're doing this is that in looking at this video you're watching right now, we also are going to have a list and so you can have a number of topics to come back to something. You don't have to try to rewind and find it. We actually list the point in the video and how you can get to it or in our how to like this one underneath the video. Like if we actually go out to YouTube. Hi, this is Brian McHenry. See, that's starting at the beginning, but if you click on the description here, show more, here is all the list also where you can just grab it. So adding task specific links so that it's very easy to get to uh, descriptions of either icons or how to, etc. And if you look back at that list here, if we go back here, you notice there's currently how to do vehicle polygon shapes, making movies, wheel separation video, and path following instruction video. And we'll start adding more. So let's go ahead and we're going to go back to our project here. And now we're going to start a new project. So you go to the icon up here in the upper left corner, second item down, and we call this demo with VRML, we'll call it two because I guess I've already run this, I had audio issues, we go next, now it gives you the vehicles that you want to select, 
what are the two vehicles you have. You can add more vehicles, etc. Once you get in there, you can add animations and emulation and simulation. But for now, we can either add default, which are these different sizes, and then later, once you set up your simulation, you can then swap in the actual vehicle, or you can get one that's as close as possible. So you click on the Vehicle 1 and Vehicle 2 model. And the default is to go to models that are in your Model 3D directory on your computer. Some of you may, some of your new users or some of your users that have this, you can delete everything in that because one by one you can bring the models as you need them. And that's why we've created, you notice up here, McHenry Cloud. And the first time you do this, it may send here downloading cloud model pictures in the McHenry Cloud subdirectory that's created in your MSoft 3D directory. We're going to bring down all the pictures, and then anytime I add one, it'll add it when you first start this up. But then you can go down through all the models and decide which one you need for your project. Now let's just say for this one we have a Ford Mustang, and we say OK. And then it will bring up after that the specs. And when you're doing specs, we always say add in your driver and other if there's other things in it, and then say recalculate the moment of inertia. And we say OK. Now for the second vehicle, we click on Vehicle 2 model. And again, if you have models in the Model 3D, you can browse through them or in the cloud. And once you download a model from the cloud, it saves that model to your Cloud Model 3D directory. So like the Ford Mustang, you see it doesn't show load, and that's why in that prior it didn't show it. But generally when you look at these, it's going to say download this model and show you the approximate size. So we can just go down and find, we'll just do Chevy. Nope, that's already done. Let's try Chevy Impala. I guess it's less than a megabyte, and we'll see what happens. We say download, and then we say OK. And then let's just say for this one we have three people in there or something at 450. 450. And then we recalculate the moment of inertia, and we say go. And now we finish. Now when you first load these up, see it looks a little strange. You want to quickly, just so you're not looking at it like that, just click Run and 2D is just as fast as 3D. But you notice now the tires look normal. Now the next phase in a new project is what are we going to do for ground? The ground you can have an option of just plain color. You can bring in pictures, which can be a diagram, scale diagram you have. Make sure you put a scale on it or overhead pictures that you've gotten from Google Earth or some other source. You can also bring in from Google Earth. And we are going to show you that after we bring in just a couple images first. Or you can bring in a DXF file, cloud file, and then you can turn them on and off and swap out. But So the first thing we're going to do is bring in a image, and we call it overhead scene. We already loaded the VRML and the VRML support files. You notice here, and we're going to bring that VRML in. Well, you can't see the VRML unless I put all files here. There we go. See it's showing all files, but obviously you can't load them all as images. But we're going to just do overhead scene, and you see here's a picture here. And so we say open, and now it approximates, tries to figure out what is the distance. If you know the actual distance of yours, and we're going to pretend we don't, we, we actually do. But I'll say OK. Now if I click the overhead, one thing to remember is if you click that little set home view, that saves that as overhead. And then we can also do a angled view. But we're going to have, the action is going to be down here a little way, so let's put it like this for our angled view. But these can be any views. You can do up to five different views. I'm not sure what's stored in there and it, whether it does your latest or whatever, but you can go ahead and make all of those as is. But now one of the things we know in this is how to scale it and what a scale is. And normally you would want to put like a line in here or a measurement or something, but we just happen to know if we click on this, it brings up the ground dialog, which has a number of things you can do, like add elevation points, Etc. And we're just going to click on the image map drape and say set size from points on image. And what we know is that the, if we make this as large as possible in this dialog, we can go from here to here, and we have 188 feet. Now you notice we're losing some of that. The vehicles look, uh, let's put this on zoom, vehicles look approximately the correct size, cutting off a bunch of it. So next we go back out to here and you just change the size. And I happen to know, or you would try like a thousand. 
And that might be enough, but if you want to get the whole image, let's put it at 1,200. And there we have the image. You can, I think if you actually go to 1,300, and of course it scales it, everything. Now if you want to double check, you can always go back here and check the size again to make sure that when you're scaling, changing, 187, 188, you know, there's a minor, if we zoom in or whatever, I'll just leave it at the scale it is. Now it says you want to put your cars in positions of what happened. And let's just say in this one, vehicle one is coming out and doesn't stop, and vehicle two is coming down the highway. So we click on vehicle one, and one thing you can do, just to you look here, and you can change colors of vehicles very easily. Let's make vehicle one a brown car. Just to show you how, see, that's, that's how you change the color of the car. But if we wanted, this also is where you can change the specs. You can actually swap out, and this is where there's an option, or let me move this over a little. There's an option, you can bring it in with the model and specs, or you can bring it in just the model only. So if you request a model, you can use a similar model, and then once you we upload the model, you can then swap it out without changing your specs. This is for color and also for scale. And of course, these are all discussed on some of those tasks specific, but I'm just going through it very quickly. And then for nodes, if you have a rollover, you can set the size of nodes. Right now, it's just set to the vehicle type because we know it's not a rollover. And then for tires, it's set for blue is for vehicle one. But now if we click on this one, it's basically, you can move it with the arrows. Or if you notice, it has a dot on it, and we can just grab it and move it. Let's just put him about here. And then we can click on him and put his speed at 10 miles an hour. Then we go back to this one. And when you click on it, and we'll set his speed to 50. Now we go ahead and run it. And you can play it or you can actually use the slider bar down below. But you notice it's not they're not hitting because we didn't run it long enough, so let's run it for six seconds. Go ahead and run it again. And using the slider bar, you see how you can use the slider bar to move it? We see we hit it. And now we hit front, and then you have a side slap. So obviously, if you have a diagram, where did they go at rest, et cetera, and that'll give you an idea of speeds, et cetera. I'm just showing this as a sample. And let me move this back into the, there we go, a sample. But one other thing, because these tire marks, let's go ahead and click on vehicle one, click on tire, and let's set it for only showing skids. And let's set that color for vehicle one to black for each. Just make it solid black lines for skidding. And then for vehicle two, let's go ahead, skid only, and let's make that dark gray. So you can have it, so it's so if you want, you could have black and gray or black and green or something like that. But now you notice the skid marks only show when it's skidding. Now, another thing I wanted to show you is if you have a scene diagram, you can just go out here and bring it in. And this one we happen to have from this particular case unrelated and it wasn't vehicle these vehicles but we had a scene with GPS so we open that and you notice it's showing that same 571 so let's set that to 1300 or was it 1200 we set it to yeah, I think it was 1300 1300 and now if we click on the ground you see that's ground two but it's because it shows ground one first, ground two is at the same elevation, you don't see it. But you can go to ground two, ground one, you can say high ground, and now you see how that brings in, if you had targets, this happened to have a GPS monitor on a vehicle in this particular case, but this is showing you if I had a diagram, and I'd have to do a little adjustment to make sure that doesn't, so the background doesn't move at all, but pretty close approximation. Now another item is, let's just say on this vehicle, we want to put in steer tables, and I think this is an important thing, Popping out to the classic M-Edit is very easy. So instead of starting an M-Edit and going to graphics, every time you go to graphics, it loads the graphics. If you start in graphics, 
and popping out to mEdit to make some changes. And if we want to make a table that's longer, we click that grid. And it says OK. Now, one thing you will notice is the table type is 2. And that sometimes causes confusion, so I'll just mention very quickly. Table type 2 means that this is pre-impact, and the second one is post-impact. And what that means is that applies the first steering or braking until impact, and then it takes the time difference between the first and second and uses that time difference to ramp on the changes. Like this would bring on two-tenths of a G for front and two-tenths of a G for rear. Now let's just say for vehicle one, we're going to have him steer to the left. So we would want to make vehicle one steer tables. We would want to make this different. So you click that. Let's make it five. And then we'll make this five, meaning we want the last two, five and four, to be pr to up to pre-impact and then post-impact. We update the table and we close. And then we go back to graphics and say save it. That's why that little dialog. And now we can actually edit it in here. You can do it there or here. And if any time like you're curious, what does this stand for? You can always hit the F1 button and it brings up the help file for it and it gives you a discussion. And then there's options like your detect contact table options. Here's some types when greater than two, because that's one of the things we're going to do here is now since we have it, we're going to do pre-impact and we're not sure when it's hitting. We have five tables, so let's just say we run for about three seconds, and then between three and 3.5, we're going to steer to the left, which is negative, minus five, four degrees. Now, if you don't have a steering, one of the things I guess I didn't show, but if we click on here or click here, we see that it says steering ratio. And if you hit F1, you see that the if you set a steering wheel ratio, then you can actually set the steer to the steering wheel angle. So let's just say it happened to have 20. You need to find a source to find out your steering wheel angle. So that, instead of minus 4, would be minus 80 at the front wheel. And so we also want to have that ramps on for a half a second, and then for another second it stays on. I guess I maybe only needed four on this, but we put 80. And then let's just say as a result of impact, it goes back to zero. So let's just make this five and 5.1. So as a result of the impact, it goes back to zero. Now, if we go ahead and run this, you will see that vehicle one Start steering. I guess I should let me do this earlier so it shows it more. Let's say at one second, and we go to 1.5. So now it'll start. It's starting it a little earlier. You see, he's steering, and then he gets hit. Steering gets hit. Now, one of the things you, if you look at the outputs, go to demo, the name of the file, and we go to input echo. You'll see that. When you set that, for the two, it sets to 99, 99.1, so it has 99 seconds. For this one, it does these as normal, and then the last two makes 99 and 99.1. Then when it detects the impact down here, you see that it changed it. The impact was at 4.129, and, and over a tenth of a second, it went back to zero. Now, that also brings up another option that we've added to the version 4. When you go to Run Summary, it's showing you that the impact is a 4.129. Now, we have an option here now for the version 4, which is the one going out hopefully in the next few days, is you see that it has, first couple things we did is it has all the information down there. You can change that to just be, if we should change this, just be X, Y, Z, and the yaw angle. Or then again, you can change it to just be the speed and time. And then one other thing you can do is you can change your notice contact time. If you set the contact time 4.129, then you see that the time here starts at my, so basically four seconds before, and it, so it shows you how far from impact the car is. 
Obviously, if you change your impact time by changing some speed or something like that, you want to make sure you change this contact time. But that's just a way, and you can change the background color, etc. Now, the next item, which we mentioned in here, is how do we bring in a VRML? Up here, you click on VRML, and you notice that it actually, because the last time I was there, but you browse out to your VRML location, because we don't save it in the project, because then the project gets too large, and you want to make sure that you, you probably should keep it in a subdirectory or something so you know that it, you remember it in case you change it. We can see, we call that scene V5. We open it, and then down here is going to show in the bottom left corner as it's reading it. And this is about a 500 meg VRML file. And now you see if we go to our side view, and we go down more, you see that we have three-dimensional. Now, one of the things you also notice, where'd the cars go? Well, if we rotate this around, you see that this VRML happens to be down or above where the cars are. One thing we could do, if we want to set it so they're closer to zero, is we could set it to we first go back to the first frame. And if you click on the VRML, see this select here. Now we can actually change the elevation. It's at five. There's one vehicle, and there they are. So they're both showing at about minus three. So that you know is one way you could do it. But obviously, you want to have it so you don't have interference between the two. So I'm going to lift it up till we don't see that other one underneath it. And now when you rerun the program, it loads it onto it. It detects there's a terrain there. And here you see, and actually you see that changed his position, the two of them relative to it. So actually we could go ahead and if we already had this set up, we can change the X and Y position. Like that. And if we click other, we can see there's where the See how you can see underneath it, it's three dimensions, so probably going overhead. Go ahead and see what it looks like here. We click on VRML. Whoops. We click on select of the VRML. If we go to other, see it's not exact match, but you can go ahead and match these. You see how it basically has to be moved to the left, so we want to get him in the to a Y position. And again, you could make your diagram move them to the VRML. It's all a question of where you want your references, just showing you that you can use different references. But And here we have that impact again. Now another thing you could do, and in this particular case, another item to discuss is the Google Maps. And this is also for reference when you use Google Maps or Google Earth. Let's go ahead and use our Google Maps to bring up this site. We put in the search box. And you see, next we go map, we go to satellite, I mean. Now you notice when we look on our Google, Earth, Google Maps that's available, that there doesn't seem to be anything there. And the 313 is basically this road. If we zoom out here, let me go ahead and cancel that. We zoom out here, that was 313. You notice <laughs> there was nothing built. So I went out and I said, let's also double check on Google Maps. Here's Google Maps. You notice it's got, it says there's the Flying J Travel Center, but there's nothing there. So then the last thing you could do is you go to Google Earth, same search. And again, it doesn't look like it, but if you down in the lower corner, see that's from 1985. So for some reason, they don't keep the dates and update it. If we click on here, then we can slide it all the way to the right, and you see there's the beginnings of something, but it's not finished. See, some of it is from the 85, and some of it is, at some point, it says it's from 2021, but obviously, I believe this was taken sometime in 2021, and you see it's quite a bit different now. So the main caution of this is when you're grabbing Google Earth, Google uh, Maps, Etc. or even from our Google, it may see if you can get the date. Apparently, Google Maps and the add-on we have in our software up here 
does not bring in the uh, most recent. It brings in whatever they have available. And so when I put in that in here, it brought up a older map, which doesn't have any of this detail. And that moment of caution is just to make sure that when you get an aerial, you find out what was the date of the aerial as opposed to what was the date of the crash that you're investigating. There are some historical sites, some that require subscriptions. I may create a forum post, drop me an email, and I'll put some stuff out there because I have a couple of different sites, and I may do it between the time I post this up and you see this. Sure, you check historically, and of course, obviously, the best is to be able to get to the scene as soon as possible so you get a as close as possible duplication of the scene that you're investigating. A couple other items to run through that we didn't talk about is on here when you there is a ground option. When you go down, see this one, there's kind of a list. You can turn on and off. So if you bring in a scene, you can turn it on and off. And I actually confused myself here a minute ago because if I turn those off, it doesn't make any difference. And the reason is right now we have, this is the VRML. And a way to turn off the VRML out is you select and you just select it to other. And you see now it went to that other one. And then if we go further, if we go down to here and we turn off number one, you see then it brings up only two is showing, which is the same as if you do this when you go through show hide. But that's kind of, if you get more than one, that's a quick way to uh, on and off grounds, etc. We also suggest if you want, one thing is if you want to turn them all off, you can always add a small, let's just say one by one foot. And now that's brought in a third ground. And we can always put this ground if we now, when we hide grounds, you can then hide all the grounds except for that one ground. You see it's a very small dot here, and if at any chance it gets in the way, you can always move it somewhere else. But sometimes you'll get a message that you can't turn off all the grounds, and so that way you can always have a ground on, but no ground. And then, of course, now we go back, select our VRML, and we show the drive versus the, uh, or both, and there's our ground from the scan. Now notice that the scan is a little smaller than those actual overheads and that I'll have to investigate at some point. But let's go ahead and turn back on one of the overhead. And you see that actually brings in more than the scan. When we restart up the program, that VRML file is not loaded automatically. You have to reload it and because it loads so fast, but it will remember the loading you had. So when you have a project with a VRML or one of the larger files, it only brings in, you see here we've got, it's bringing in just the overhead picture. Here, let's go to the, well, let's leave this, I like that scene right here, so we'll put this as a, this view. We'll go here for that view and this for that view. But you notice now, of course, also because this is the VRML, see how much higher the VRML is than the ground? So let's just go ahead now and bring in the VRML again. We say, and that's why you need to remember and preserve your VRML file on any project so that then it can be reloaded quickly. And it just saves it as a separate because you may use it in a couple of different files. Now you notice it's loaded and it's, it's real time. I don't change it, but you see now he's on the ground. And one of the things we also didn't do is let's do a, a quick animation. Let's zoom out of this crash. Let's just say somebody here happened to notice a, maybe this guy was racing or something. So we want to come down the ground level. And we can always save that here while we then try to rotate around. Like this. And so that we see some of the three dimensional, since why would you scan it if you don't want to see it? So let's just make that, again, save that as our save. Now we go to here and we say, let's add a tracking camera. And we can call this one Pan. See, now you can name them. And we set, let's go back to this view. We set that as the first. And then as it runs, Let's see, about here, let's rotate it around. And 
we continue on to the point of impact, watching that time. Remember, we set the impact time, which it preserves, and you can get take it out, obviously. Let's say that. Once it hits, to the positions of rest. And now when you play it, There's auto pan with the vehicles, etc. Look for videos that talk about that. But this is just showing you that now you can see. And I guess that's not the. Let's go over to the other side. That's really the action is on this side. Let's go back to first turn off that. You can turn it off without having to go into that. We're going to turn off the uh, auto pan and move to the beginning. But you see how now you can see the sign, things like that. So we can just say, here's another one we want to do. Let's save that. Go to Auto Pan, add it. And call this other side. Or you don't even have to call it anything. And we say, we'll start with this first view. And we'll zoom, since it's going to stay in the field of view, right to there. And we'll look down a little. Just make that the second, then the third. So now when we play this back, a quick question is, and these are in some of the things I might as well show you, is to do a quick video. You can go quick. And we want to set, one thing is you have to set the size to something. And uh, what I'll do is we set the size. It tells you, here's your actual current size. And so you want a size, since I'm limited to the size for YouTube, um, it's at currently 1733 and 870. So let's go to 13 by 780. And we say, OK. Takes a second. And then we say delete. And we go right. And it's writing frames. And then let's just say, why not do the other view? If we go to pan, the other one, and then we say, do that. And now you say, append. And we say, OK. And now to make those into a movie, you click the movie button. You say, write movie. And it grabs those from there. You can have them, it grabs a B bitmaps that are made, and then it, where do we have these? Well, we have that, oh yeah, it's VRML demo, so let's just call this demo movie. And we say save. And depending on, sometimes it will say their problems, just give it time, especially if you have more frames, I'd keep it to a thousand frames, because then you can always merge them, like using Camtasia or something like that, and edit them, and add titles, and things like that. But See, sometimes it says not responding, but just give it a second, and it will come back, and then you'll have your movie. You see, it's done. Now, 402. Now, if we go out to that barrel demo one, and you see demo movie one, and you click on it, and there it is. So this has been a quick demonstration of setting up a, a new project, a couple things with that. There's a lot of other videos we hope you take the time to look at. If you have any questions, please send us an email. And we thank you for watching. This has been Brian McHenry of McHenry Software. Thank you.